Hi, in this tutorial, I'll give a detailed explanation of ray tracing in Blender 4.2 using three different projects. If you are interested in learning the latest 3D techniques, particularly in Blender, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Before we begin, let me introduce our asset store website, where you can explore a variety of free and premium assets. We offer high quality game ready assets and also Blender projects, all of which you are free to use in any of your projects. So be sure to check out our store at store.blackcave.com. I've pre-built this scene in Blender 4.2 using EVNX with the lighting and materials already set up. However, I'm facing a significant issue with light and shadow leakage in the scene. The shadowed areas aren't looking right and the indirect lighting quality is also poor. In this situation, I need to use ray tracing. Ray tracing is a technique in which a light ray bounces multiple times within the scene, resulting in improved shadows in the Direct lighting and reflection. Additionally, it can be quite resource intensive. Be sure to use EVNX as it differs from the EV found in previous Blender versions. This version includes a ray tracing option with various properties. You can watch the tutorial here on EVNX. The shadow leakage is quite evident. Now let's enable ray tracing and you'll see some remarkable differences. While many aspects have improved, this is just the beginning. I still need to find the right balance. Let's go over the properties. The first is the method, which defines how the rays will behave. The default is a screen. This method operates globally across the scene in real time. The second is a light probe. By pressing Shift A and in the light probe, you can see three types of volume. Let's select one of them. This method allows you to set a range for ray tracing. I covered volumes in detail in the tutorial available here. Feel free to watch it. Now let's scale it up by pressing the S key. In the volume settings, you have the option to bake it. I wouldn't recommend this method. The screen method is more effective but heavier. The next is resolution, but it won't function correctly until I've balanced the other properties. Setting higher values will lower the quality. The 1 1 ratio first best quality for ray tracing. Let's set it to 1. Although you may not see a significant difference right now, I'll return to this section later. Max roughness can enhance shadow quality, but as noted, setting it to 1 will disable global elimination. In certain cases, setting it to 1 is acceptable, but a value of approximately 0.8 can be more beneficial. Alright, let's select a higher value. As you can see, setting the value to 1 can significantly impair global elimination. In the shadowed areas, you can see that there is no global elimination present. I believe this value is effective. The balance between global elimination and shadows looks good. In the screen tracing, adjusting the precision property allows us to enhance the micro detail. If I adjust it, you won't notice any significant changes. In fact, I should zoom in and give it another try. In certain areas such as these, I can notice some changes. Alright, let's reduce it slightly. This property allows you to adjust ray tracing thickness. Let's set it to 1. As you can see, both the shadows and micro shadows have improved. While Blender 4.2 lacks ambient occlusion, you can create a similar effect using ray tracing. Let's take a look at in the well-lit area. You'll notice considerable changes in the shadow areas, but not much difference in the well-lit areas. Alright, let's choose a suitable value now. Now let's adjust the resolution again while keeping the current configuration. As you can see, there are significant differences when using lower quality settings. This represents the higher quality. There is a denoising option available. Disabling it will give me sharper results. This isn't ideal, but if you have a low spec PC, disabling it can help improve performance slightly. 
The Fast GIS section includes the settings for just single level illumination. In fact, setting the max roughness to 1 will make this section ineffective. There are two options for the method, Global Illumination and Ambient Occlusion. I suggest avoiding this option and instead enhancing the AO by adjusting the ray tracing thickness. The resolution is configured for the best quality, while at the low setting flickering becomes noticeable. Let's read the quality setting to the best. Increasing the number of rays can enhance quality, but you may not notice any substantial differences in detail. Additionally, this value greatly affects performance, so let's revert it to 2. Actually, the ray indicates the number of rays that light and its reflection can produce. Steps indicate the number of samples taken per ray. Let's increase the value and see the results. As you can see, there have been noticeable improvements in detail. This may impact performance, but if high values are essential for your work and quality is priority over to increase it. Let's set it to 30, for example. There has been a slight change. Let's revert it back. Distance indicates the range of applying global illumination. Zero means it will cover the entire scene. You can set a specific distance for applying global illumination, allowing you to optimize performance. In a large scene, the value of zero can affect performance because GI will be applied across the whole area. Increasing thickness enhances the shadows, but it also influences contact shadows. Take a look at the creature's feet. You can observe the enhancement in the shadows close by. Let's select a higher value. Bias can enhance shadows dead or very close. It has several applications. You can observe shadows in the contact areas. For instance, let's set the value to 0.4. Now the results are significantly improved. Particularly the shadows. Alright, let's turn off ray tracing and compare the results with the ray tracing version. This isn't just a simple difference. Let's also test ray tracing in a specific environment. Let's activate it. You might not notice a major difference because the scene is already packed with details. Next, let's fine tune the attributes for better control. I just want to match the values I used in the previous scene for a consistency. Finally, let's make adjustments to the GI section. It's generally better to use GI in scenes with sunlight and HDRI. I've covered the lighting in detail in the tutorial here. Let's compare the results with and without ray tracing at a close range. As you can see, ray tracing allows for more powerful lighting. In the next and final project, I will focus on explaining how reflections work in ray tracing. Press Z and switch to render mode. Now I need to select a low roughness value for the ground. Open a shading window and create a new material. A low roughness value is necessary for effectively testing reflections. Great, now let's go to render settings and enable ray tracing. Everything has transformed, particularly the reflections. You can now clearly see the cube's reflection. You don't need to modify the properties for ray tracing at this point. My main focus was simply to introduce real-time global reflection. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel.
and feel free to share your ideas and questions in the comments.